Just look at this weather. It's so nice when the sun comes out. It's cold. Came out this morning thinking it was the start of summer. And I went, Ooh, that's bracing. But still, I find it easier to cope with the cold than the wet. And because it's sunny, I'm doing what most British people do going to the seaside, have a little ride around Porthpool, which is one of my favourite places. As I'm sure you know. But today, for a change, I'm going the other way round. And I've had a look at the map. And there's a couple of new roads. Well, not new roads, roads I haven't been on before. But I'm thinking I might go and have a look at after we've waited at the traditional British one-way traffic lights. I didn't have much time one day. Thought I'd go out on a quick 10-mile ride. You know, in that 10 miles, there were three sets of one-way traffic lights. So because it's sunny, even though it's cold, wouldn't be surprised if we see some people in shorts. It's one of the most amusing things about British life. Is how people go out in their shorts if the sun's out, regardless of the temperature. And there's other people We do things by the calendar. Again, temperature's not important, but 1st of April, put your shorts on. But those people who sit there, whose dress code is dependent on the calendar, will wear their coat on a warm day, because it's still March. And if it's mild and sunny, on the odd occasion you get that in March, you get this most wonderful contrast of somebody walking along with their coat on next to somebody wearing shorts. And it's even more amusing if they're a couple. The other thing that I laugh at with British people is they run out. As soon as the sun's out, I'm going to sit in it. Whereas us people from Africa spend our lives running away from the sun, trying to find shade. Quite often in South Africa, you drive into a car park, it's three quarters empty. And all the cars will be grouped together in a small area. And sometimes, if you have visitors from Britain, they wonder why. So why is everybody parked over there? Well, and you say, well, it's because there's a tree there. And the shade is a precious commodity. If you go into an office park, you have a thing called shade netting. It's like nylon imitation hessian. You put it up on poles. And if there's a row in the car park of shade netting, that'll be with the executive's park. Because that status affords you a bit of shade. That's how precious a commodity shade is in Africa. I was expecting to see a lot more people around here. Because it is 
the school holidays. It's the Easter break. And it's sunny. Still, I expect they're all queued up trying to get into Tesco's car park. These roads really are bad. It's a consequence of 13 years of Conservative government. And the amusing thing is, there we say, we're the ones who can be trusted with the economy. And people fall for it. And if they're supposed to be so good with the economy, we should be rolling in loot. We should have the best roads in the world. And yet when the Conservatives are in power, they tell us there's no money for roads, no money for the health service, no money for schools, no money for libraries. It's easy to say you're good with the economy if you just tax people to death and don't spend any money. Well, they do spend money. They just give it all to obscenely rich people who've got more than they could ever spend in their lifetime. Right. Let's go and have a look. We're going down a new road now. Well, the surface doesn't look too bad. And certainly nice to be away from the traffic. That's one of the things I love about a gravel bike. If it takes me places I wouldn't have otherwise gone. And I get to see things I wouldn't have seen. These lanes are generally in pretty poor condition. This road was probably laid 15 years ago. And has had very little maintenance since. And some of them are alright, don't get me wrong. But if you hadn't been down it before, you wouldn't take the risk of going down there on a road bike with 25 mil wide tyres. And this one here is called Zigzag Lane. I love a descriptive road name. And I'm putting quite a lot of effort into this. It's deceptive. But there is a constant uphill. That's a busy little section of road there. And that's the other thing I like about gravel bikes. Obviously not always, but sometimes you can find alternatives to the busy road. They're going down paths and things. And I... Uh, I want to get another bike. I'm sure you're going to hear me talk about this a lot until I actually do it because I don't really know what I want. This is another new bit that I haven't used before. And this one is quite dirty. So I started off thinking that a road bike, I've got a gravel bike, I've got a flat bar bike, a road bike. I like to go out sometimes and go as fast as I can. But really, it doesn't happen as often. Quite often the weather's bad. 
and I want to go out in the traffic but then I started having problems with the giant oh, I don't know I do like a flat bar bike but oh, this is really so nice I'm in the middle of the countryside here and yet I'm between Porth Corbridge and Port Albert. Morning. And that's the thing, you go out and you're in the middle of the countryside. Well you feel like you are. And then somebody comes towards you walking his dog. And you think, clearly not that far away from civilization then. So for the amount of time that I ride flat out on the road, I'm not saying I don't want to ever do it again, but maybe a cheap second-hand bike for that, because I don't do it that often. But I love the gravel bike. But I do find a flat bar bike is so nimble particularly in the, in the cycle paths. So I decided, I say I decided, nothing has been decided yet until I actually buy a bike. But I thought I'd found the solution. Because there's really only one that I know of, flat bar gravel bike. And that's the one they call the Cube new lane it used to be a cube sl but they've changed it to new lane and they've put grx group set on it fantastic exactly what i need only trouble is you can't get one and that really annoys me Our bike manufacturers put things up on their website and then tell you you can only have one in a year's time. And that is so frustrating. And there we are, back to the back to the view of the biggest steelworks in Britain. And the only other flat bar gravel bike I know of. Is a, a Trek FX. The FX is eye-wateringly expensive. I don't really know why. I know Trek consider themselves to be a halo brand, but still, I'm still not convinced that a one-by drivetrain is the way to go. Whilst I am a big fan of gravel bikes, I ride a lot more rough road, gravel covered tarmac. I like to go a bit faster from time to time. That's something else you can't do on a road bike. Oh, I'm so done with one-way traffic lights. I like the ease of use of a one-by. I think with a 42 front chain ring you're going to sacrifice a lot of speed. If you've got any suggestions, I'd love to hear your comments. Looks like I'm riding into wind the rest of the way home. 
And if any of you are wondering why I need another bike, I don't. I just want one. And as you get older, you start to realise life's too short not to do the things you want. Last time I came down this road, it was like riding through a lake. Well, let's hope it's all gone.